Now introducing the light light. <sighs> light light. Do you need a light here? Light light. Do you need a light there? Light here, light there, light light goes everywhere. Purchase the light light. Now introducing the light light pro. Light light. Order now, we'll throw in a free light light. Use the light light for all your holiday lighting needs. Do you want to give someone a seizure? Light light. Have you ever been taking a bath at night and you thought, wow, I wish I had some Christmas lights in here, but I don't want to get that pesky outlet too close to the water. Well. This is about the same. Don't put this near water, but it's still a light light. Light light. Order today for just $5.95. Light light. That's not true. Light light. Now introducing the light light stationery. Light light. The light light stationery you can look at, but you cannot purchase. I just broke it. Light light. Light light. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I, I have to apologize for whatever the heck you just watched, but keep in mind this is why the skit video hasn't come out yet. Okay, keep it rolling. So the purpose of showing you that commercial was to explain why my lighting right now is really bad and will look a little bit weird if I put it like this. So we're just gonna... One minis later. Sorry about that, I'm just trying to get the lighting for this video down and I uh, got a bit carried away. But anyway, today's video is going to be about how to evaluate new sets. Theros is now coming out, and wait, before you click away, if you haven't already clicked away because of that really weird skit, I know what you're thinking. You don't trust me, and I see why. I look like I've been playing this game for about five months, but I've actually been playing for five years. I mean, you can't be a terrible player and get... This. Oh shoot. I paid $40 for that. No. To be serious, I paid $45 for that online and I really regret that. No, I actually won it. I'm not trying to say I'm the best player you'll ever meet, but I'm saying that I have won my fair share of events in limited formats, which are really about evaluating cards and evaluating the set that you're playing in. So the first thing you want to do when you're evaluating a set is look at the overall economy of the cards. As a general rule, the power and toughness should add up to about two times the casting cost of the card. This is for vanilla creatures. So basically a 3-1, that's four total power and toughness, for two mana. That's fair. A 4-1 for 3 mana would not be fair because it would not fit this rule. Anything above that generally indicates that some of the cards in the set are going to be more powerful and better. Now, we're talking about this at the common and uncommon level. Typically, at rares, you'll get some underpowered creatures with more powerful abilities. How do you tell if something's a powerful ability? You see if the ability of the card impacts card advantage, board state, so removal or creating multiple tokens, and if that card is going to gain you life or drain other people's life. Now there are other effects, but most of them will fall into these three categories. A big life switch, whether it be maybe a giant creature comes on, board state, so removal or creating a whole bunch of blockers, or card advantage, making your opponent discard or exile cards, or maybe even getting rid of their graveyard, milling them, or drawing you cards, or giving you more cards to work with. So Jumpstart was a powerful ability on cards like Chemistry's Insight, because it allowed you to have major card advantage. It was a card that basically replaced itself with itself. Yes, Jumpstart did make you discard a card, but typically you can just use Chemistry's Insight to draw cards, discard cards, and then play Chemistry's Insight again. The second thing you're going to look at when you're evaluating a set is cycles. So, temples. If you want these, then generally it's going to be a better set. What you want in a set is consistency, and cycles offer some version of consistency. With so many cards, at least you can look at a cycle and say, oh, if I'm happy with any of those or if they're gods, I'm happy with getting any of those gods, 
then that makes the set better and more fun to open. Third is how much you will actually use the set. If it's a bunch of cards you really don't care about, then there's really no point in you having fun with the set, because you're not going to have fun with the set. If you think of going to at a sealed or draft event, then yay. But if you evaluate a set and you think all the cards are boring and plain, then the set's really not accomplishing what it's supposed to do. Each new set is supposed to have something for a lot of different types of players. For me, the newest set, I'm really just hoping for the light light. Really, for the new set, I'm just hoping for some gods to put in the new god deck. If we're talking about cycles, you want the cycles to be powerful. And a lot of evaluating a set is taking the number of cards, especially at common and uncommon. So number four will be evaluating uncommons and rares. Mythics, halfly powerful. We're going to talk about how to evaluate a card more in a second, so you can see what really is powerful. But it's all about the, com the uncommons and the rares. The rares need to be something a little bit different and fun if they're not going to be valuable or played. The uncommons have to have some cards that are actually good and powerful. So let's take a look at the new Athros that was spoiled. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the new Athros, which is a mythic. Then we're going to look at a rare and an uncommon to try to get a sense of what the power level may be like for Theros. As you're seeing on your screen right now, Athreos is a 4-7 indestructible. He has the classic Devotion Clause. He's also an enchantment creature, which can impact a lot of other things within the set and within the game in general. A 6-mana 4-7 indestructible is pretty darn good. At the end of your end set, put a coin counter on another target creature. Whenever a creature with a coin counter on it dies or is put into exile, return that card to the battlefield under your control. So now comes to the evaluating the cards. Three things you need to look for. Abilities. What can the abilities do? How good are the abilities? Two, synergy. Will it synergize with a lot of other things in the set or in the game? And three is a certain wow factor. Just things you really like about the card, things you think it can do, and the creativity. Does it open the card up to a new space? Does it make the card more interesting or more powerful? I think with Athros we see all three of these things. Number one, it has indestructible. It has an ability that can let you gain control of other creatures anyone controls. The coin counters can go on anything. So you could have coin counters with all sorts of stuff, board wipe, and then you get all these creatures under your control. This is why I think the card is innovative, exciting, and powerful. Athreos seems a little bit expensive for 6 mana, but if we look at the metagame, especially the standard metagame, there are some cards that decrease the cost of enchantments. He's an enchantment creature. Therefore, due to the synergy, we can say that Athreos is pretty good and is likely going to see some play. Now let's look at Satessan Champion. It's 2 and a green for a 1-3 Human Warrior. It has Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card. It actually seems pretty good. It has an ability to pump itself, therefore making the economy of the creature even better. It replaces itself, checking another box off of our list. It also has high synergy with the cards in the set. There are a lot of enchantments and magic, and there's going to be a lot of gods and enchantments in the future. Finally, let's look at an uncommon. Let's look at Staggering Insight. It's one in the blue for an enchantment aura. Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature has plus one plus one and lifelink, and whenever this creature deals count damage to a player, draw a card. You're getting plus one plus one for one mana. The rest of the effects you're going to get for another one mana. It gets lifelink, and whenever it does count damage to a player, you draw a card. This is very reminiscent. What's the one card? This is very reminiscent of that one card from the Ixalan block that went absolutely crazy and standard with mono blue aggro. Curious Obsession. Ooh, Curious Obsession! I don't really know what's going on. So, if we look at Light Light, now available at Chanel. Oh! So if we look at the card, we can say Curious Obsession was one mana. It came with a downside, however. This card is only upsides. You're getting the plus and plus one and the whenever does combat damage to a player clause for one blue mana. That's really good. You're not getting a downside and you're getting lifelink for the other one mana. So, this card seems really good. Turn one, you can play a one one creature, and then turn two, you can boost it, give it lifelink, and whenever does combat damage, you just draw a card. This overall clicks all of our boxes. Good economy, it changes the board state because you get to draw a card. And three, it changes the life totals. You gain life while doing damage to your opponent. So that is a very good example of a good card. Overall, what is important for a set is cards that you want to collect. Cards that you want to have. If there's a set and it has no cards you want, what's the point of opening that set? So really, what it comes down to at the end of the day is things you like. If you like good quotes, then go ahead and 
crap open a pack of Almond Cat if that has your favorite quotes. If you like pure power, then there's a set for you there, and there are probably some very good cards for that in a given set. Overall consistency is the best thing to evaluate a set for power level with. The cycles are also really good, just like the gods. I'm really hoping that the gods keep coming back beyond just Athreos. Amen. So thank you guys for sticking with me through that. I just turned off the light and it probably looks a lot better now, so sorry about that. But this is the first kind of rant I've done without a script, so it's been a lot of messing up. So if it looks a little jumpy, that's why. Thank you guys so much for sticking through and watching this video. Hopefully it makes sense and have a great day.